Ready? Awesome. Hello, my name is John Dupuy. I'm one of the social media volunteers here at the, here at the uh, Canadian Science Policy Conference. And here with me today is Katie Gibbs, Executive Director of Evidence for Democracy. Hi, Katie. So could you tell us uh, exactly what Evidence for Democracy is? Yeah, absolutely. So Evidence for Democracy is a new national nonpartisan organization that's advocating for the transparent use of evidence in public policy development. And so how did you get involved in uh, Evidence for Democracy? How did it get started up? Well, so back in 2012, uh, after the government introduced their first omnibus bill, that had a lot of changes to the Fisheries Act and the Environmental Assessment Act and cut the funding for the Experimental Lakes area. Um, myself and some scientist colleagues organized a, a large rally called the Death of Evidence Rally on Parliament Hill. And you know we had sort of expected a few hundred people and we ended up getting a few thousand people and just a ton of media attention. And after that, everybody kept asking us you know, so what's next? And we hadn't really thought of it, but we ended up sort of taking that energy and momentum and turning it into a nonprofit organization. Now, um, getting scientists involved with politics is, there's a bit of a cognitive dissonance there. Um, how, is, is, is that something that's fairly new in the Canadian landscape? I think it is, and I think, you know, there's a few reasons why we're having a lot of success doing that now, even though it's something that isn't really very natural for scientists. You know, I think, on one hand, they are very concerned about the policies that we're seeing, especially at the, the federal government level. So it sort of got to that point where, you know, things got bad enough that they felt really um, that they had to engage. Um, but I think the second thing is that, you know, we're really advocating for science for the role that science should play in society and in public policy development. So we're not advocating for you know particular policies on this and that, and so I think that makes scientists more comfortable, that we're, we're just advocating for the role of science and, and for funding for science and for the open communication of science. So it's really the things that we're advocating for are really things that you know all scientists support. And you're not advocating for, speci for specific scientific programs, or, or are you getting into the... It, well, not, not really, and it's more, you know, on things like most of the other sort of existing groups that end up advocating on science issues, usually they really have, you know, another motivating factor, whether it's an environmental group or things like that. And so they sort of end up taking positions on specific issues like pipelines or things like that. Um, they say based on scientific issues, but I think that's where the scientists feel like it's sort of more controversial and they're less likely to engage. Whereas, you know, advocating for, you know, to make sure that all of the evidence was used in a policy decision is less common. So it seems less like they're advocating for their own particular self-interest. Yeah, yeah, for sure. exactly. Now, can you, can you talk a little bit more about some of the kinds of events that you've organized? Yeah, so, you know, recently we've done, we did rallies again. So this time, instead of doing one big rally in Ottawa, we did rallies across the country. So we ended up actually having 18 rallies across the country to, to stand up for science, is what we called it. So, so that was a huge success. And then we also organized a panel discussion called Science Matters in Ottawa, uh, where we had Chris Turner, who is the author of a new book called War on Science. We had him speak and a few other um, experts as well, sort of discuss the issues. Um, and that's, that's pretty much what we've focused on so far. Now, have the kinds of events that you've been doing, have you, have you found that uh, that kind of uh, momentum has spread to other places? Are other people starting to uh, mobilize as well? Uh, yeah, absolutely. I mean, you know, even when we had the idea to have rallies in more than one city, you know, we had thought maybe we'd get four or five. And then, you know, we just kind of sort of put a call out there on our email list and our website uh, to see if people were interested in organizing rallies. And, you know, we kept hearing from more and more people all across the country who said, you know, absolutely, I want to organize an event here. So it's really great yeah. to see the, the sort of energy spreading. So the, the, the organization of the individual rallies was really decentralized? Yeah, absolutely. So we sort of took ownership on the Ottawa rally, and then we, we sort of you know, assisted other groups and other individuals in other cities to organize their own event. So what's next? 
Well, so we have sort of two big projects, well, I guess three. So one of the more ongoing things we're doing is putting together what we're calling a network of experts. So really trying to get experts in many different fields to, to sort of sign up for, for this network. And so one of the things they can do is help alert us to what's going on in their field, sort of be our eyes and ears on the ground. The other thing is that, you know, thanks to these rallies, we get a lot of um, media calls and the media comes to us trying to find scientists to speak to. So we also see this network as a way for us to help facilitate getting the right expert to the journalists when they need them. Now, are you thinking of maybe organizing some sort of expert database where the media could just go in and figure out for yeah, themselves? Yeah, so, I mean, so right now that is what we're doing, but it is more like only we sort of have the, we're sort of still the intermediary, but I have been sort of toying with the idea of possibly making that public, not just for media, but someone also had the idea of seeing if the experts were interested in helping community groups who may benefit from an hour or two of their time and their expertise. So that's something we're thinking about as well with the network. Uh, one of the other things that we're doing is we're hoping to bring together a number of groups working on these issues to build what we're calling a science charter. So really this will be sort of outlining the policies that we would like to see at the federal level that would strengthen science in Canada and the communication of science to the public and using evidence in policy decision making. Um, so we're hoping to sort of do that throughout 2014. And the third piece is sort of really a, a public education, public outreach piece where we're hoping to do a website where we have a lot of information on what some of the changes to science have been in Canada and more importantly why it matters. So really linking the things that we've seen back to how it actually affects you know, regular Canadians in their day to day lives. So it's sort of a final question. How, how have you found your own journey from science to activism? It's been fun. I mean, I've certainly gotten to do a lot of things that I never really thought I would have gotten to do. You know, lots of media interviews, being interviewed for documentaries, giving talks all across the country, um, and learning a lot of skills that I never thought I would. You know, I, especially, you know, running a very small NGO because we're very new, you kind of have to do a little bit of everything. So it's been a great learning experience. Um, it's funny because one thing I really didn't like about academia was the time scale. I felt like it was way too slow, um, whereas the NGO world is the complete opposite and it's a little too fast. I need to find something that's kind of in between. So, so five years from now, science, NGO, where do you think you'll be? Um, I think I will probably be still in more in the NGO world. Um, I'm, as much as I'm passionate about science, one thing that it just really frustrates me is how little science is actually used, how little the public understands it, how little it's actually used in public policy development. You know, it's so frustrating when you publish your research and you know that pretty much nobody is ever going to read it. So I'd really like to, to help actually get, you know, society and policymakers using the science more. Well, thanks a lot, Katie. Yeah, no problem. Good luck.